Weather maps, also known as the synoptic chart, are an example of an isoline map. Isoline maps are made up of lines that join points of equal value. Contour lines drawn on a topographic map are another example of an isoline map. Weather maps use lines called isobars plus other symbols to join together lines of equal air pressure. Today, most meteorologists use the hectopascal for measuring atmospheric pressure. Many weather reports to the public use the millibar. One hectopascal equals one millibar. On these American weather maps, the isobars are drawn at intervals of four millibars. 1,013 millibars is the average sea level air pressure. Therefore, areas with an air pressure of over 1,013 millibars are considered to be areas of high pressure, and areas with an air pressure below 1,013 millibars are considered to be areas of low pressure. On a weather map, areas of high pressure, or anticyclones, are identified by a letter H. These areas are associated with clear skies and little wind. Areas of low pressure, or depressions, are usually identified by the letter L and are associated with rain, clouds and high winds. High pressure systems have enclosed isobars which increase in pressure towards their centre. Low pressure systems on the other hand contain isobars which decrease in pressure towards the centre. When isobars make a sharp bend around a low, this bend area is called a trough. One of the main symbols employed on a weather map is called the front. A front represents the boundary between two air masses and appears on the weather map as a line with triangles or semicircles attached. At the front of two air masses there is stormy weather. There are four types of front most commonly seen on weather maps. A cold front is the boundary where a cold air mass pushes underneath a warm air mass, forcing the warm air mass upwards, which forms clouds and rain. A cold front is represented by a blue line, with the triangles pointing towards the direction of movement. A warm front is the boundary where a moving warm air mass is replacing a cold air mass. A warm front is represented as a red line with semicircles pointing towards the direction of movement. Warm fronts move more slowly than cold fronts because it is harder for warm air to push against the denser cold air. As the warm air rises above the cold air, water vapour condenses forming high clouds. Light precipitation can fall on areas as the warm front passes. A stationary front is the boundary between two air masses which are not moving. Neither mass is strong enough to move the other. Therefore, a stationary front can be pushing back and forth over a given area for days. A stationary front is represented as an alternating warm and cold front symbols. An occluded front is a composite of two frontal systems that merge as a result of occlusion. Cold fronts generally move faster than warm fronts, therefore the cold front will overtake a warm front and force it aloft. An occluded front is represented as a purple line with triangles and semicircles. Weather maps also show wind conditions. Wind is the movement of air. Wind moves from high pressure areas towards low pressure areas. Winds do not travel in a straight line due to the Coriolis effect. This effect is created by the rotation of the earth. The Coriolis effect deflects wind to the left in the southern hemisphere and to the right in the northern hemisphere. Thus in the southern hemisphere wind flows clockwise around low pressure systems and anti-clockwise in high pressure systems. In the northern hemisphere wind flows anti-clockwise around low pressure systems and clockwise around high pressure systems. Generally wind flows towards the centre of low pressure systems and away from high pressure systems. When isobars are close together, wind is strong. When isobars are far apart, wind is weak. Now it is time for you to go and read some weather maps and see if you can interpret them.